So here we are in Fusion 360. I've sketched out some geometry and created a little bit of a solid geometry to give me some options on how to add some of these relations and show you what they do. So I'm just going to go through and, and click through these different relationships to give you an idea of how they work. Some of this terminology might not be very familiar to you, coincident, tangent. If you've had some experience with drafting, some of them might be obviously perpendicular and tangent are probably ones that you may have heard of, but let's just go through it. So coincident basically just means that they touch each other. So I could say put these points coincident to each other and now they become one point on top of each other. Now coincident can also be to a lot of different geometry, a point in a line, a point in a arc, a point in a circle, anything like that. But keep in mind too that the Coincident doesn't mean it's actually touching, it just means that it's on the geometry. And in a CAD tool like Fusion 360, a line is actually infinite in length. So this point is still on the line, even though the length of the line visibly is shorter, the line itself goes on forever in both directions. So this is still coincident to it, even if it's not physically touching it like this. When we look at tangent, tangent is basically just a relation that says that they touch at a single point. So if we go tangent, then that's with an arc or a circle and a, and a line or another circle or a spline. Tangent just is where it touches at that single vertex, the single point where if you put a circle on top of a line where it touches. And two circles can obviously be tangent as well. You can pre-select, like I'm doing here where I'm just control selecting, pick one, hold control, pick the other, and then pick the relation, or you can also pick the relation first, I could say tangent, and then go pick the two pieces of geometry that I want selected. You also have concentric. Concentric would allow you to make two arcs share the same center point, like that. So by selecting that arc, it also projected it into my sketch. That's why I see that purple line. That's the projected geometry. It's now in my sketch and usable. If I want these two arcs to be the exact position and size, then I can say make them concentric so, that, so they share the same center. And then I can also make them equal. And that will make them equal diameter or radius when it comes to an arc or circle. And if you pick two lines like this, and you pick equal, that makes them equal in length. So for cases like this, where I want these two circles to be symmetric around the center line, I can go pick symmetry, pick the two pieces of geometry, and then the center line. And now they become symmetric. So now as I click and drag these around, they are the same distance from the center line and same radius or diameter. Let's take a look at the relationships up here. This is actually a spline. It's only got two points on it though, so it looks like a line right now, but it can curve if I wanted to. And you can tell by clicking on it, you get these tangency handles. There is a course on curvature and splines that you can take a look at for more information here. But I want to show you just real quickly since I'm going through the relationships. So I'm going to click the, the line and the spline and create a relationship called tangent first. So that's like this one here. It just means that it starts in the same direction. And then on the bottom, I'm going to pick smooth. So I'll pick the line and the spline and that creates a smooth relationship. And in a more advanced course, you'll talk about that curvature more, but I'm just going to show you the curvature display. I just right click on the spline and show and toggle curvature display. And what you'll see is that on the tangent, the direction is the same, but the curvature doesn't match. This goes from straight to curved immediately. And you can tell by these lines here when you toggle on the curvature, the length of the line represents the intensity of curvature. 
So if I were to drag those drag handles around and maybe flatten it out a little bit, and I'll toggle the curvature display back on. So you can see here in this flat spot, the curvature is less, so the length of this line is shorter. Right here, it got tighter because I pulled the curvature closer to this endpoint, so the curvature is tighter and there's a longer line. When you come over here to this endpoint, you can actually see that the curvature flattens out and matches the curvature of the line next to it. And that's what the smooth is doing, is the, the spline has to start flat and then can start deviating as it leaves the, the other geometry that it's smooth with, so this line. So it starts flat and then becomes curved. So the this arc here goes all the way to that point, signifying that the the curvature goes to zero, it goes flat. Where up here it just goes and stops, that's because the curvature doesn't match across here. So that's the difference between the tangent and the smooth relation. Tangent just means it has to leave it the same direction of what it's related to, where smooth has to leave it the same direction and match curvature of the geometry that it's related to. So there's some examples of some of the relations. I guess I could show a few more, like perpendicular. Let's Let's go to perpendicular, so I could pick these two. Now they become perpendicular, and you see these symbols, these are all representing the relationships that are applied to them, and I can actually delete them by picking that relation and hitting the delete key on the keyboard, and that would then free it back up to allow it to move. Let's say this one I want to be vertical. So I can select it and pick this horizontal vertical symbol here, and that just moves it to whatever it's closest to. If it's closer to vertical, it's going to move it to vertical. If it's closer to horizontal like this one, it would switch it to horizontal. So let's see right here. So there you go. Oh, and this one is another example of tangent. This is an arc now instead of a circle. So it kind of behaves a little bit more like that spline did, where now the arc becomes tangent, so it touches right when it's in the same direction, and then starts to arc. So it's right at that same point that if you drew a full circle, it would be touching that line at a single point like the circle is here. Okay, so there's the sketch relations. Let's go into creating our own model now.